as most of you know, I am the expo treasurer as well as I'm the club treasurer. And Joe is our um, expo chairman. And what we thought would be really kind of fun is just to share a little bit about how well we did for Expo of 2018, how well we did for Expo of 2017, and just go over a little bit of where those funds that we raised actually went back into the community for last year, um, and just talk a little about it a little bit. So that's what we thought we would do today. So 2017 Expo proceeds, $53,150, which is amazing. Um, Joe's going to talk a lot about how 2018 went, but I think it's really important to just recognize how incredibly impactful that is to our community. Because if you look at this, at this list, between July 1st of 2017 and 630 2018, that's when the Rotary year ends for us, we actually gave back to the community $51,488.60. I think you should give yourself a call. So I kind of listed out here where the money actually went. The board typically breaks the funds up in a couple different directions. The first one is funds for charitable giving. Those are usually items that are a smaller dollar amount that come up throughout the year. You can see that we spent $294.05 on the Festival of Trees. We do $2,000 for Hannaford's gift box or food boxes. We bought some jackets for Special Olympics. We supported the um, St. Albans Sports Association Young Blades. We did Maple Festival Talent Show. The Franklin, Honor, Franklin County Honor Guard, we gave $1,500 towards. The Interact Club started up, which was pretty exciting. So we gave them a starter fund of $880 to, to get rolling. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the AS House Fire, as most of us remember, um, Alan had quite the ordeal last year, so the board had voted to, to help him a little bit. The Church Street Sounds of the Season received $2,000. The Great Race received $1,200. The Ecology Project, had 1700 and the town forest project was 4000 I think now would be a nice point to talk about, and now Jeff talked about it uh, two weeks ago, I think it was, that the $4,000 that Rotary actually donated was matched through a Rotary district grant. So you can look at it that we gave $8,000 towards that project, which I think is pretty astounding. The other thing that I broke apart this year was funds for ski bus. So we all might remember that the ski bus, we all kind of looked at it and said, is this being profitable? Can we keep running it? Last year was awesome <laughs> because we got some sponsorships that really helped run the program. So for income wise, $14,460 came in. Expense wise, 14205 went out. So operating balance, we actually had a little bit extra, $254.16. Um, you can look at that, that that actually helped take care of the cost to do the online registrations because that wasn't reflected in these expenses. So, Are the sponsorships in that 14 grand? Right? It is. Yes. Yep. Okay. So it really made the program very viable. So we're excited to see where it goes this year. The next kind of bucket of money that we look at is funds for special projects between 5K and $25,000. The Northwestern Medical Center um, we had a five-year plan to donate $10,000 towards the room up there. So we paid $4,000 out to that this past year. And then there was bleachers, helmets, and sports equipment, um, a total of $9,200 for that. Part of that was for a promise that we had made the year previously, so it's a little bit higher than maybe what we had originally anticipated, but we had caught that we hadn't um, made a donation that we had promised we were going to. So. We took care of that, that was the bleachers. Funds for special projects over 25,000. We don't have a project identified yet, so no money kind of came out of that, bucket, that budget. Funds for vocational service, we supported the Northwest Technical Center Skills USA competition. You may remember they actually came and talked about that a little bit, so $3,200 went out that way. And then something that I think is just absolutely amazing is we were able to pay off the Taylor Park Fountain. Um, so we actually paid that off in full with $20,000 and 
<laughs> and it's done. So, wow. right? How much was it? <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> so, in total, that's kind of a quick year year <clears throat> overview of where the money from the 2017 Expo proceeds went. I'm going to turn it over to Joe so he can talk about the 2018 Expo proceeds, and we can talk about what the future looks like. And Stacy, that fountain paid in full is actually how many years early? I do was not it, know. <laughs> it, was quite, I, it was quite many, a few. Right? It was a 10 year um, repayment, I think, started in 2014. So, so what? We paid in three yeah, years. amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Over $300,000 total project expense for the fountain. Yes. Okay, thank you, Stacy. So let's talk now or wrap up the 2018 Rotary Expo. And on the very next sheet that you see here with the pie chart, these are all the, uh, the net numbers. And you'll see that starting with booth sales, the net was $18,983. The sheet behind it has a six-year look back. Uh, the total on um, sponsorships and booth rental was really $81,310. Um, of which 18983 is the net. And how that happens is that all of the costs that are borne go against that line item. So that's why the number's lower than it is on the following sheet. The silent auction and grab bags were $17,842.58, and that is a new record. Uh, you'll see on the next page. Raffle tickets. Uh, were 22% of the overall take, and that was $10,285, which was an increase over the prior year. And the snack bar was $422.81, uh, a little lower than the past years. The total net proceeds were $47,533.52. Our goal was to hit $50,000 or more a uh, couple of reasons we did not achieve the $50,000 level that were one-time, uh, well, when I say one-time charges, one is, you'll recall, the weather was horrendous, and we ended up paying, I think it was $1,793 in extra snow plowing and salting charges uh, during the expo. And the other thing is we spent almost, I think it was 900 and some dollars on signage that will be used year in and year out. A lot of them were the signs that you saw as you walked towards the front door that talked about all the various things that Rotary has done over the years. So those are gonna be used for many years to come. So it was kind of a one-time hit, but uh, those two items together was roughly $3,000. So we would have, I guess what I'm saying, is achieved our 50,000 goal. If it weren't for those, we didn't achieve it. My feeling is, um, even though our net was lower than the prior four years, if you look at the direction that we're going in almost every single category, it's in a positive direction. The raffle tickets, the thing to keep in mind there, of course, is our superstar seller who has been a part of the legislature mm -hmm. over the last couple years. That was the biggest impact on those sales. We're trying to modify and do some things differently this year uh, in an effort to try to move more sales instead of having a grand prize of $2,500. Well, if Colonel loses his election, then of course, that <laughs> 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 he won't be happy. Steve being very positive there, uh, depending on where you sit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is this boat tampering? <laughs> 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 uh, so, card basis of being able to uh, So we, <laughs> we felt pretty good that we actually went uh, in the right direction on that, even without uh, Carl being able to spend the kind of time that he has in the past um, on raffle ticket sales. However, this year, going forward, one of the things that we're changing, and it really came out of our discussions about four months ago, 
is instead of having a $2,500 first prize, grand prize and a $500 second prize, we're going to have four $500 prizes and two $250 cash prizes. So there's a lot more opportunities for people to win something than there were in the past. So, you know, if we sold uh, 1,000 tickets again, you know, your chances have just gone up exponentially because of the number of prizes there are. And even to get $250 in cash for a $10 outlay is a pretty good deal. Not to mention on the back of the ticket, there's ways that you can save money instantly. So um, anyway, we're hoping that that'll be another, um, hopefully help us to uh, achieve higher sales this year. So $47,533.52 is what we will have to utilize for programming for the current fiscal year that we're in now uh, through the end of June. And um, again, we just wanted to close the loop on last year, or this year's expo, just so everybody was aware of exactly what we netted out of it and also where we're going as far as our trends. Again, I wanted to do this six year look back um, because it, it's kind of you bracket on either end where we had $47,000 and then we went up in the middle and kind of came back down in the center. Our goal this year is certainly to achieve in excess of 50, if not $55,000. And um, we're hoping that some of the changes that we're making, Rainey's got a lot of modifications even when it comes to uh, exhibitors um, and some of the programming that he has there. Uh, we've had some really good early news so far. Um, I don't know if there's anything you'd like to mention at this point or not necessarily. Okay. People's Trust Company is giving us a check for 10 grand, but if I'm waiting on Has it, not been on confirmed. You <laughs> might, be, might be waiting a little while. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's an A for effort, right? Yeah. Can we ask questions or you want to wait? Yeah. Uh, sure, yeah, yeah, please. So I just Any, wanted to know what the driving. Um, I thought I knew, but from uh, the booth sponsorship reduction, was it a couple of the big people not coming back? Or? Well, Randy can speak to this better than I, but one of the big things was we had a, a, a company bow out within a few weeks of That's the expo that really you couldn't reap back those dollars because yeah. it was large space. So that was one thing. Randy, I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to share. that, But that was a big one. So basically, to answer that going forward, is that now the program is set up in such a way that if you do that, you don't get all your money back. So it's slotted so that the closer you get to the event, the less you get back. Sure. Because people have to understand that if they're going to commit and then they're going to bow out at the last moment, you know, there's a cost to that yes. that can't be, you know, recouped. Unfortunately, I think one of the things that hurts us when the economy is strong, um, what I heard from a couple of people that are usually there is they don't have the staff to send people to, which is really, did you hear that? That's probably the number one. Yeah. Especially with the smaller companies that could benefit from it, it right. really is yeah. taking their, the owner out of the business for the day and can't afford to do that. Yeah. Is that something where maybe we can tie in some of the older interactors to kind of be their focal point? You're just going to be handing materials or, or taking your basic information. Could we tie in with another group to almost provide them the volunteers to do it and all they have to do is get this base training? Is all we want you to say? Here's who you refer to, that type of thing. It's a great idea. It's a good idea. The only and thing I would add to that, the other side of that is, I know. For instance, there's one company up there, that swimming pool company that's always in the ring, who does that every year, and the woman has no idea what she's talking about with that, and if anything, it makes the swimming pool company look bad, yeah. um, because they're, they're not doing a good job representing them. Yeah, I think it depends what you're selling, how much explanation is required, and do you give enough training so that, the, you're right, the individual there has at least a good foundation to be able to talk to someone. And then recommend that the vendor give us an amount of time that they'll respond back to the individual who's you know, interested in their product mm -hmm. so that they know that within 24 hours somebody will contact them. Mm -hmm. We can kind of lay that out as part of the volunteer program, and I think that would make people feel better. They need somebody to contact them pretty fast. Karen? So I, 
than I must have an accountant here, but, but if I look at trends and the expenses, and I look at the percent compared to the income, I notice that it's been going up through the last few years. Um, and, I, and I know that we're at the highest this year at 62, but I must, and, and if you take the 3,000 bucks off, it comes to like 59, so it's still like 54% or so. But is that because most of our costs are fixed? Yeah, well, not only that, but one of the things to keep in mind is, and I'm not exactly sure of what year it was, but there was a point in time where Collins Purley really drastically reduced their rates so we could keep the show there. Since that point in time, though, what's happened is each year there's been increases. So part of that increased expense every year, no matter what, is going to be a little bit more going to Collins Purley for all the space. So let's say that that number is, uh, let me just throw it, $1,500 a year. Well, that's $1,500 one year, but then it's three after two, then it's 45. So that's part of what you're seeing here trend-wise as far as expenses. So um, we're significantly ratcheting it up um, to help Collins Pearly. Is that the idea? Well, uh, I, I'm paying fair rent. It is, it is rent, and what they would say is that years ago, they ratcheted it down to ensure that we still maintain the show. So what they're trying to do is just say, okay, a little more of an equal playing field is that we pay a little bit more each year for the rent. Yeah. This year, the loan basic. Usually the leases are for three years. We do it in three-year increments each time. And the other thing that they're going through right now is with the change to Maple Run is getting everybody to understand what this event's all about and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I will say that basically the trend has been over a period of time of increases each year to Collins Purley. If you go way back in time, I believe we paid a little more than we do now, maybe 10 years ago. <coughs> But unless we continue to ratch up our the Correct. Income, then the we're then the be giving more and more of our money to the college early ab our absolutely are gonna start eating it up. And at some point in time we may look and say, does this still make sense because of the rents that we have to yeah. pay? Yeah. And it's really going to be on us to try to balance and figure out what are the ways to increase the revenue streams so that we can offset all that. If Stan. I may say though as a former AG, um, looked at a lot of different clubs and their fundraising. This is not just gold plated, this is platinum plated by comparison to the amount that people make <coughs> in comparison to their, their expenses and time in. And I'm not saying it's a small undertaking. We all know it's a big undertaking. And I know of people that put in even more on some events and return significantly less. I mean way less. So uh, you know, um, I do think it's wise to ask these questions. Don't don't get me wrong for a second. Understand. But I would like to say, impressive, no matter how you look at it. <clears throat> well, and, and three there was usually three big cost drivers there. The complex was not the only one, though. Yeah, Vermont. Tent. I mean, it was Vermont Tent. That's and Vermont Tent's a for-profit business. Right. There's not really a lot of option, and paying rainy because we need someone to sell our, our mm -hmm. booths full time. So. All three generally go up a little bit each year, did when I was doing it. Yeah, the thing with Vermont Tent, we do try to offset some of that cost because when they sign up and do their registration, they might say, I need extra electrical, I need extra this, which we also, we pay for, but we charge them for it too. So we try to at least offset what we can with them. And just so you know, with an organization like Vermont Tent as well, that's always done in a three-year a lease increment as well. So try to manage uh, a little tighter over a three-year period with uh, with them. Steve? Uh, so, uh, with regard to the, um, uh, the snack bar, yes. I know that's, uh, I mean, it's a wonderful <coughs> thing Jennifer does because it's no cost to us. We don't have to manage and all the proceeds come back to us. But as that that if that number keeps dropping, I'm assuming it's dropping because of the food vendors we uh, rent booths to. That they're going and eating other things rather than the snack bar. I would say also it's due to the fact there's no rotarians behind the counter harassing the public to come in. And <laughs> well, I, I, I somewhat agree with yeah, you. Yeah, I agree. Because that and, and and what's interesting is there were no food vendors 
at that one last year. The, you know, the Greek lady the yeah. wasn't there. You obviously had wines and stuff, but you didn't have food. I would have thought. It would have went up the other way. I went to the stack bar at one point. You know what? I didn't want a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it, it might have something to do if, if we really want to look at, at increasing the stack bar. Maybe we should look at the quality or what they're actually doing there. Because I think last year would have been the perfect year, given yeah. there was nowhere to eat like Friday night, because right. yeah. mm -hmm. um, there were no, no vendors. And if you look at how much the grab bags have, have changed in the, over the, the years, I'd say some of that is to do to uh, both, uh, you know, some really great bags, I mean, rubs, <laughs> but also yeah. to, shall we say, some fairly aggressive hawking. Yep. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Having done that for a yeah. few of those years and other people coming in, I'd say the degree of energy every time has gone up. And the results, I think, show it's a speed. I think you may have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, any other questions, concerns going forward? Um, yeah, thank you. I mean, it's and to Stan's point, and and I I'm totally in agreement that at the end of the day, this is really some really good solid uh, income. Uh, doesn't mean we don't strive for more. And to Karen's point, we're always going to try to balance and figure out ways to offset increased expenses. But you're right. This event is gold for this organization. When you think of organizations that put together three or four different fundraisers throughout the course of the year, and that takes a ton of people power to be able to pull off, and they don't get anywhere near this. They might end up with thirty-five grand, but they're spending the entire year doing fundraisers. So. so can you, I know we're almost out of time, but so are you um, basically doing it the same, like no entry fee, having a raffle and all the other, the things we did last year, are there any significant changes coming up? There might be some minor things, but yes, no entry fee remains stable. Um, we're trying to do some things maybe uh, right when you get in the door in the, uh, what you call it, uh, courts there, the uh, handball courts mm -hmm. and what have you, but no. Basically, uh, yeah. Because we all start talking it up here. So, so yeah. Do you have, because this will be my first one working with, with the group. So if you don't have an entry fee, do you have any type of like a, ro a rotary kind of donation fishbowl or something that people can at least make donations? That's one of the water. things that, mm -hmm. that's one of the things that we're talking about adding is having yeah. some kind of a donation box right by the door there. A rotary. We have Carl selling rats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a. Yeah. <laughs> you buy a raffle ticket, put the change in the bucket. Oh, Bob. Oh, yeah. When can we anticipate getting the raffle ticket so we can give them as. Yep. Uh, you will have them for the holiday season. I don't know whether we'll have them. Th the target's Thanksgiving week, but if we have to move out a week or two, we will. But uh, that's the goal. So we will have them for the holidays. Um, does that answer what you're... Have you lined up the sponsors with the deals on the back of the we, we have. We're still waiting for Jay Peak, and that's one of the little hang-ups we've got. And I told them we've got to have an answer like this week. Um, because we got to get this, the, the modifications laid out and get them printed and what have you. But yeah, we're well underway on that, Bob. It's just a matter of one or two little answers that we need, and then we can move forward. I think Tom had one last question. Yeah, my question is to Stacy and the board. Yeah. Do we have um, a nest egg of monies for special projects, or have we exhausted that on the fountain and now we're starting over, or where does that stand? So right now, going into this fiscal year, what we did is we took 10% of the expo proceeds and pop that into our $25,000 and over bucket. So I think it's 22.5 is what we're looking at. So we're, we're almost at that $25,000 mark. Um, it's not earmarked for anything at this point. Until it's earmarked, it will just continue to grow, grow with the idea of putting 10% of expo proceeds into that bucket every year until we have the project fixed. Seems very <laughs> and, and in closing, I just want to uh, big shout out to Rainey for all of his work. 
No, you but the yeah, but it's a thankless job, and you're doing a phenomenal job. So but there's a lot of people you deal with who, yeah, you know, I mean, it, it, takes, it takes a whole club. I know. I but, okay, you guys can kiss okay. after the <laughs> meeting. <laughs> Let's thank these two. Thank all of you.